Hey friends of Keyclock, nice to see you again. This is Desnico. Sometimes you need more than Keycloak provides for you. So sometimes you need some custom REST endpoints for some special advanced functionality, or you don't want to expose all the Keycloak internals to your clients. And in this video, I'll show you how to start implementing your own custom REST resources and REST endpoints. So probably you all know the um, OpenID Connect endpoint configuration from your um, Realm. When you have on the start page on your Realm, you have the endpoints and you have this OpenID endpoint configuration. You see all um, the endpoints existing in um, your Keycloak um, uh, environment for the issuer, the authorization endpoint, token endpoints, introspection endpoints, and all the other um, endpoints. So these are the default OpenID Connect endpoints um, used in the authentication flows and the, the various authentication flows. And um, yeah, these are the, the default endpoints. And additionally, um, to the OpenID endpoint configuration, you have the um, Keycloak admin REST API. Um, where which uh, you can complete um, manage your Keycloak uh, server and also the um, Keycloak administration console, the web UI um, for the administration is based on this um, admin REST API of Keycloak. So, but sometimes um, you need more, you need advanced functionality. You don't want to expose the internals of um, the Keycloak admin REST API to your clients because they shouldn't bother um, handling um, the, the complicated um, uh, API calls and uh, you want to simplify uh, things or you want to expose an endpoint for clients to re uh, retrieving some, some action tokens for users, some custom action tokens for users perhaps, and all these things. Um, so you can actually implement custom REST endpoints, custom REST resources in Keycloak, which are then exposed in every realm existing in your Keycloak environment. So let's dig into um, some code and I show you how to implement all this stuff. So go to the IDE. And as always, we're implementing an SPI, Service Provider Interface. And for providing a custom resource. We have the Realm Resource Provider Factory. This is the base factory um, interface we have to implement. And um, as usual in the factory method for my uh, examples, there's nothing, nothing um, special, not much uh, configuration. So actually no initialization, no post in it. Uh, only the get ID uh, method returns the provider ID and the provider ID is uh, specified here, the my rest resource. And that's a um, um, special um, provider ID because this provider ID is part of the path of the rest resource we see later, we can use later on. So my rest resource will be part of the path. And we have the create method. And in this create method, we will return a realm resource provider implementation. And in our case, it's the my resource um, provider, and we are um, overhanding the Keycloak session to uh, the um, resource provider. And in this resource provider, um, again, some methods to implement. We can um, return with the get resource uh, method, which actually returns um, the object, the class with all the rest resource endpoints definitions in it. Um, we can return a separate class or we can, we can return um, actually um, this as the, the same class when uh, there are only a few endpoints and we have these uh, endpoints defined in um, the resource provider class, which I did um, for this example. So. Um, First, we start with a simple endpoint, just a hello endpoint, um, non-authenticated, it's a hello anonymous, and we're just returning a map of the key is hello, and um, the value will be the name of the realm. Because, as I mentioned already, um, every um, REST endpoint, REST resource you will deploy is available in every realm. So if you want it only to be um, 
working in, in one special realm. You have to take care it's, um, of it yourself in a programmatic way. Uh, per default, it's active in every realm. So this is the um, hello resource and we're getting back a map of hello as the key and the value, the name of the realm. So let's um, look how this, uh, this works. Um, I have here Insomnia, my REST client, and the URL will be, um, of course, the server um, host name, auth as the standard, the default context path, realms, and then the name of the realm, it's uh, Acme. I have a resource, uh, a realm called Acme in uh, my uh, key clock environment. And then we have um, the path of our provider. So this is my REST resource. If we go back to the factory, we can see here is the provider ID is um, my REST resource and the provider ID is being returned from the get ID um, method. So that's um, important to know um, that the provider ID is part of the path. And then we have simply um, the hello path uh, in here because um, we have it specified here, the hello path. And all these um, REST resources defined here, here are um, upon the um, factory ID as the base path. So let's run this um, endpoint as a regular get endpoint and um, it should return hello Acme as Acme is um, actually the realm. Send it and yeah, we're getting hello Acme as a result in here. Uh, that's quite nice. And if we change the realm name from Acme to the default master realm, um, it's um, hello master, like expected. This works pretty simple. And um, in your code, you can um, implement everything you want because you have the session as um, the base uh, object in uh, your resource and um, based on the session you can um, access all other key cloak resources uh, you need. So having an anonymous REST endpoint REST resource is not that very good because exposing all the internal functionality and the, some secure data uh, via an unsecured endpoint it's not uh, really a best practice. Um, you really um, must not do this. And so you have to uh, secure your endpoint in, in some way. Uh, unfortunately, it's not possible by just simply throwing an annotation to your um, method, but you have to do it programmatically because there are probably different ways how to, to do the authentication. And I have this um, path hello auth. And this is a hello uh, for an authenticated user. So if this method will be called by an unauthenticated user, we get um, a 401 for unauthorized um, request. So the first thing we have to do in our method is check the authorization, or the, the authentication, sorry, and we get an auth result. And check auth, I did here in um, the method, the check auth, we get an uh, app auth manager bearer token authenticator because we're sending the token as a bearer token, the authentication information as a bearer token. And um, we should authenticate upon this uh, bearer token. If the authentication can't be done, we're getting null. And if um, the authentication is null, we're throwing a not authorized exception with a uh, uh, reason of bearer missing. And not authorized exception is returning a response of 401, the um, unauthorized HTTP response. So if we get an authentication um, and um, the issuer, uh, the issued for a claim of our token doesn't match the admin CLI because we want to um, have the user authenticated against the admin CLI in this example, um, we're throwing a forbidden exception so that the user gets a 403 uh, unauthorized, uh, for, sorry, um, forbidden um, a response code. So if everything is okay, if um, we have a, bearer, a valid bearer token, we can authentic authenticate with this bearer token and the bearer token is issued for the admin CLI client. Um, 
we're just returning the authentication and we're using the authentication in our um, method, the hello authenticated method. And we're returning again just a map with the key of hello and the value. This time is not real, the realm, but the actual username from the authentication. We get the user, we get the username, and we're just uh, returning a response with this map. And um, again, you don't necessarily have to use the admin CLI. This is just for this example. And um, you can um, use or you should implement whatever uh, fits to your needs. And um, if we go back to our um, REST client, we have the hello authentication, uh, hello auth endpoint, again with the my REST resource path. And um, this uh, request takes as a bearer the response of another request, the um, user token um, admin CLI request, which uh, just uh, does a um, um, direct grant to the admin CLI, to the default client built in in every realm. I have already created a test user, uh, that's Nico, and uh, just um, doing the authentication. I will execute it, I will get back an access token, and this access token I can use here um, in my um, request for the authenticated uh, custom resource. And that's the, the definition, the configuration of this all. Just here you see the user token uh, from the admin CLI uh, using the access token. And you can see in the preview here, that's the actual access token. And um, nothing else, just a regular get to the hello auth. We can send it and we can back, get back hello does Nico because we are authenticated with the bearer token as does Nico. If we um, disable the bearer uh, authentication and sending the request, we're getting HTTP 401 unauthorized as expected because we don't provide any of, um, um, of an authentication of a bearer uh, token to the request. If we enable it again, we can send it to hello does Nico. And if we now change it to um, master, of course, the endpoint is here because it's available in every um, realm, but it won't work because the token is issued for the ACME realm and not for the master realm. And again, we have a token, send it to um, the endpoint, but it is issued for another um, realm. And because it is, is, uh, it's issued for another realm, the token can't be um, verified and the same as providing no token. That's the uh, reason because it's 401 unauthorized. So that's easy to implement um, the basic steps for custom um, resources, custom REST endpoints in your environment. Just have to um, build it, to package it, to deploy it to um, Keycloak, like mentioned in the documentation. And um, as usual, um, a link to the code uh, on my GitHub repository is uh, you can find in the video description. So you um, can copy it and um, build uh, your own REST endpoints upon uh, this code. And also you can find some um, possibilities to, uh, to test it automatically. I have a my resource provider test class in which I um, make use of the Keycloak uh, container, the Keycloak test containers implementation, um, which I'm a maintainer from. And you can find it in the upper uh, right corner, a link to this um, video about the Keycloak test containers and how to use it. And um, in this Keycloak container, I power it up with um, the provider classes um, in my um, project. And I'm testing the anonymous endpoint, um, getting an, uh, 200 of the standard realm uh, master. And then uh, I have two tests for getting the authenticated endpoint, um, the uh, valid um, execution, expecting a 200 as the administrator. And here is um, the unauthenticated uh, endpoint call and expecting a 401. So you can uh, also test 
your complete endpoints automatically in your integration tests. I hope you liked my video and if yes, give me some thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already and turn on the bell so that you don't miss any of my future videos. Um, put in the comments which endpoints do you use in your Keycloak environment, which functionality do you expose for your clients and uh, yeah, I'm curious to know. See you next time, bye bye!